Hello everyone. This takes me about the same amount of time as I would put into a detail of painting a face with acrylics. So I am leaving it real time. I want you to see exactly what goes into this. And because of the length of this video, we're splitting it up into different sections. You guys are going to get stuck hearing me narrate. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. What you see here at the very beginning is me using a color shaper to put the basics of her pupil, her eye, on the foundation of the off-white base coat. What I'm using is a basically a dark color, and this is the firm color shaper. You notice it is white. It is not as firm as the dark black ones, which are basically called clay shapers and are used a lot of times by people for sculpting and so on. Here you can see I've switched over and I'm now using a black clay shaper. This gives me far more control. And because I'm using the metallic pigments, I, I use the clay shapers because if you use a brush, it's going to explode in dust and you're gonna get it everywhere. It is not fun to deal with. Now I've switched colors. This is for the actual iris color. It is a metallic blue. The actual name is Pearl X Pigments Sky Blue. In this particular case, what I did when I'm doing the details, I'm actually blending the colors together on the face as I work. Throughout this entire video, I'll tell you when I stop to seal. Right now, for the most part, in this first segment, I have not stopped seal at all. I am just basically cruising on through and blending as I go. So you can see me putting on the iris color. A lot of this, too, will be affected by your sculpt. If you've noticed, a lot of times when you're doing a figure, the eyes may be one side is slightly different from the other, and it's not so much the figure or the direction that it's looking, it's the fact that the sculptor is right or left-handed. So you're going to have a eyeball protruding, but it may not be the same exactly on the other side. Now here's one of my famous pointed cotton swabs. This is the ones that you get at Walmart or a typical pharmacy, Walgreens, CVS, whatever. I use these for blending the colors together, for softening them, for getting them places that, you know, I can't do it with the color shapers. Everything works together for the good of the whole. Actually, a colored pencil. I am using it for her eyeliner and for her eyebrows. So, yes, her eyebrows have been penciled in. This is a colored pencil I got through Dick Blick. I've discovered them in the model horse industry. Like miniatures, you can go nowhere in the model horse industry for a horse show and not get your stuff damaged no matter how well you pack it and nine times out of ten you're going to discover the damage right before you set it on the table to be judged these pencils are excellent in covering up those little pin marks the mystery damage that you didn't know was there until the last instant they are not chalky in any way. They are not waxy in any way. They are the most unique colored pencil I've ever encountered. I will put the link in the description to Dick Blick where you can get them, but they're called Ko I Nor. It's K O H, the letter I, and then Nor, N O O R. And I'll put the link to that down and below in the description. But as you can see, I'm going through and I'm using this for her eyeliner to def help define her eyes and I'm also using it on her eyebrows if you watch the video too you'll see every once in a while you'll see my hand shaking because of the hand tremors and that's basically why I find it easier to work with pigments for me they are much more forgiving 
Then acrylic paint, you know, you saw the previous video with me trying to put acrylic on just the whites of her eyes, and you saw me shaking like a leaf. So, and that's also another reason why I like the larger scale figures to start off with. Remember, I took a break from the hobby to write my books and get them published and everything. And so getting back into painting, I, I'm, I'm rusty, honestly. And I find it easier to start with large scale figures so I can get back into the swing of things and I can get my hand tremors under control because I have a certain way of painting. Once again, here we go back to the cotton swab. I'm using it to get the colored pencil softened and put into places where I couldn't reach with the actual point of the pencil. I also use it, as you can see right here, I'm kind of twisting it. I'm using that to get the powder out of the corners of her eyes. You'll see me lift the head out of the camera every once in a while that I'm blowing off excess dust that is getting in my way and I don't want it to get elsewhere on the, the model. This is the end of part one of the details. I will be editing and releasing part two as soon as possible. Thank you for watching and of course if you guys have any questions you can always post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. If you are not subscribed, please do so and like the video. We always appreciate that. And that lets us know how things are going on your end. Thanks.